God is in the business of transformation. He transforms our hearts, our minds, our relationships. He brings life where there is death and makes a way where there is no way. The cross is no exception. Not only being where the Lord expressed the greatest act of love for mankind, but also being an incredible example of his transforming power. With Easter approaching, I wanted to take a short break from the Color Cube Challenge this week as I made space to reflect on the meaning of this holiday and to create a painting that represents the transformation we find in the cross. Last year I did a minimalistic Easter painting, which is not my usual style, but was so much fun. This year I wanted to do something that would have that similar feel of contrast between two sides of the canvas, but not quite as drastic as that painting was. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll be sure to link it here so you can check it out after this one. I probably spent the most time working on the background for this reason. I wanted there to be a sense of a shift in tone between the two sides of the painting that would be reflecting the more obvious contrast that I was going to put into the cross itself, yet still having that background blended enough together so it felt like one scene. I set out to paint a sky that would accomplish this look. The left side of the canvas was going to represent the darkness and pain associated with the cross, while the right side would speak to the light and the victory of Christ over death. The events depicted in Luke, Matthew, and Mark as they recount the crucifixion were especially in my mind as I envisioned how I wanted the background to look. Each account talks about how in the middle of the day, darkness came over the land for three hours and Jesus took his final breath. With this in mind, I went with dark brown, maroon, and orange tones to try to depict this. And then for the right side of the sky, I used more shades of blue to give a sense that the darkness was clearing. I had known for a while I wanted to do some sort of cross painting this year for Easter, but I wasn't exactly sure what. I had been praying about it, and then during worship at church one night, it was like God just gave me this visual of the dual meaning behind the cross. In that time period and culture, when they saw a cross, they knew it was a symbol of pain and death. The cross was the tool in which the Romans performed the capital punishment of the day for the worst of the worst criminals. And the Romans weren't the first to ever use this technique of crucifixion, but they definitely became masters of it, making it a prolonged and excruciatingly painful experience. Bystanders would see the wooden cross with those nailed upon it outside of the city. They were exposed, beaten, and in what I can only imagine to be some of the most agonizing pain. Whenever I research deeper into the crucifixion and what it all entailed, it always hits me like a ton of bricks. It makes my stomach churn, it gives me the chills, as I actually consider what it would have felt like to have a nail driven through my hands. The thought of being scourged to the point that my bones would be showing through the brokenness of my skin. A little intense and gruesome, I know, but this was the reality, and I think it's important we remember that. The severity of the cross. Seeing this would have been an immediate symbol of pain and fear. It would have represented punishment and suffering. It was an instrument of death. There was no hope for those who faced it. That is, until the one upon its beams was the Lord God Almighty. Jesus endured this horrifying and brutal execution despite his innocence, so that you and I could be saved. The truth is, that death sentence belonged to each and every one of us on the earth. It was our sin that hung him there. But through his sacrifice of taking on our punishment, the way was made for our debt to be forgiven and paid for once and for all. It breaks my heart when I actually sit with what Jesus went through. This was the cost, the cost to save us. We owed it, he paid it. And to top it all off, he was separated from the Father, forsaken from all that was rightfully his. Only for a moment, but still, I can't imagine how alone he felt. This sacrifice means nothing if not for the resurrection. But because Jesus rose to life on the third day, he defeated death, not just for himself, but for any who believe in him, that they may not perish, but have eternal life. After that, the cross would in time be transformed to mean something so much more. Now, thousands of years later, we have crosses all over the place. We put them on our clothes, 
make it into fancy bedazzled jewelry, hang beautifully crafted wooden crosses as decor. We pair them with hearts and cute phrases on greeting cards or bumper stickers. We could keep this list going all day. This image that once put fear into the hearts of those who would see it, that was the cause of such pain and blood and tears, a device used to gruesomely end people's lives. We now polish it up and wear it around our necks as a symbol of hope and love. God transformed the very object of punishment and death to now be the very thing we associate with freedom and eternal life. This is so crazy to me. I talk about transformation and the cross a lot. When you've experienced the Lord's transformative power in your own life, it's kind of hard not to. I was so broken. I felt so alone. I also mocked Jesus. I thought Christianity was hypocritical and ignorant, lacking depth. I had no clue. <laughs> the last thing I wanted was Jesus. Yet I remember this drawing, this pull on my spirit, whether or not I recognized it as that at the time. I could feel God's presence speaking to me, trying to get my attention, softening my stubborn heart little by little for years and years, until I reached a point of pain that I couldn't bear, and I knew that presence was there waiting for me. So I finally gave in, finally put down my shield. I finally said, okay, I didn't want to fight it anymore. As I mentioned, I had felt this pulling on my spirit, but I was hesitant to listen because, to be honest, I was a little fearful. I didn't know if I really wanted to open that door to going to church and believing in Jesus because deep down, I knew it was going to change me. I knew it would call me to a different lifestyle and I worried that I would lose myself. But little did I know, the transformation was so much more than I could have ever realized. The funny thing is, I found all these things that I thought defined me actually didn't. And the parts of me that had always been there only truly began to thrive when I began operating in them through God's love and his presence. I'll never forget the feeling I had in those early days of my faith. It was as if my true self had finally come to life. When I look at the cross, I am reminded of Jesus' unconditional love as he sacrificed himself to save us from the wages of our sin. I remember how he has poured his grace out over me, meeting me in all the brokenness and messiness of my life, even though I had rejected him for so long. I think of all the ways he has strengthened me to endure through the times that have tested my faith. I contemplate the pain he was willing to face because of the joy set before him to be reunited with us on the other side of it. When I look at the cross, I see hopelessness become hope. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more creativity that helps deepen your faith and relationship with God, check out these next. Thank you for watching. This has been KO, here with you to create eternal perspective.